Welcome back to Indianapolis this week. Joining us now, Indiana Senator Dan Coats. Let's talk about presidential politics. Marco Rubio, a senator from Florida, may enter the race for president seeking your party's nomination uh, next week. We've already heard that Rand Paul from Kentucky and Ted Cruz from Texas are also joining in. What will it take for your party to win the White House? Well, there's about another dozen that you're going to have to add to that. They're just a, a new candidate every week. Sure. But I think what it will take is someone that um, can accurately and clearly describe to the American people how to take this country and move it forward. We're growing at about half the rate economically that we should have or normally would have after a deep recession. Um, we're not putting enough people back to work and with our economy is not dynamic enough and we're continuing to rack up debt. Uh, that is one issue that has to be addressed. The second is that all that's happening overseas and who has the policy background experience and can articulate America's role in the future, not what it's been in the past, not maybe what it is now, but in the future, what should America's role be in terms of providing the kind of leadership the world needs, but dealing with the complexity of the problems that we're facing. And that's a, a two uh, points there that uh, have amazing impact uh, on the future of our country. And uh, it can take us down the wrong track or put us on the right track. And whoever best can sell that with their vision for the future on those two issues, I think will be our nominee and, and hopefully the next president of the United States. Can your party dismiss the guard in that being Democrat Hillary Clinton? And I say old guard because she and her husband were in the White House before. Can the party say Hillary Clinton is a... Is a is someone from the past that we should just ignore? Does the Democrats need a new, fresh face? Well, that's a debate the Democrats are having right now, and actually the Republicans are having that also. We have Jeb Bush on one side. That's the third Bush seeking a, a nomination. Um, the other side will be saying, well, that's, that's, a, that's the old guard. Um, there are probably a lot more opportunities for younger people in the Republican Party now because it looks like Hillary Clinton has basically frozen out uh, everyone else. And so, yes, I think it will be an issue uh, in the campaign, depending, of course, on who our nominee is. If it's old guard against old guard, then it kind of neutralizes. If it's old guard versus new vision and younger person, then I think that'll be a major issue. Another developing issue is the issue of Iran and nuclear arms. Mm -hmm. You are not for the, the proposed plan that is before Congress. Well, what I've seen of it so far, it's a bad deal. Uh, the president has conceded way too much. Iran has already said we don't agree with, with the president's interpretation of what they agreed to. And so we got a bad actor here, two bad actors in the world right now, uh, Russia under Putin and Iran uh, under uh, the Ayatollah, uh, spreading terrorism, spreading uh, uh, discord uh, around the world, and Iran in particular has violated so many agreements, I don't see how we can trust them uh, going forward. Trust and verify is what the president said, but Iran has already said, uh, well, we're not going to give you access to certain facilities. We're not going to do what, Mr. President, you said is in the agreement. So the president's in a real problem on this one. We have a lot of bipartisan support in order to look over this uh, agreement very, very carefully in the Congress, in the Senate, have a vote on it, and potentially override a presidential veto. I think right now, as constructed, it's a bad deal for the United States and a particularly a bad deal for the world. Last 30 seconds, should Cuba be taken off the terrorism list? Well, Cuba has to uh, own up uh, to what it's been doing in terms of spreading terrorism and human rights abuses and others. The president seems so anxious to make a deal. He seems to want to forget everything that's happened in the past. You have to take that into the context of where we're going to go in the future. And I think there needs to be some realization that Cuba has been a bad actor also. Now, if they own up to that and come to an agreement that they're going to abide by the rule of law and abide by international norms, then that's another question. Senator Dan Coates, thank you for your insight. You're always welcome you. to come back. Thank, thank you for joining us.